Hi, my name is Rachel, and I'm a theater person. I've worked and lived everywhere across the country, acting, singing, directing, and even cleaning toilets. I moved to Harrisburg two years ago to work at Open Stage, a professional theater company that's been around going on 35 years. During this time of social distancing, we had some time to reflect on what it means to be a performer with no audience to perform for. As always, we hope to make lemonade from lemons and take time to reflect on the phenomenal artists that have become such an important part of our local culture and our community. This is Thank You 10. Uh, yeah. so thanks for taking the time to do this today. Of course, um, so glad to. Yeah. I love talking about myself. <laughs> You're an actor, right? So. Right, exactly. I spend so much of my time interviewing other people. I'm like, when will it be Sean's turn? <laughs> uh, so I was born in, uh, in Harrisburg. Uh, I've lived here or in this area pretty much all of my life. Um, and as far as acting and, and theater goes, um, uh, I, I was in a, a play in kindergarten. I was in the Three Little Pigs in like, I don't remember what exactly happened, but I remember I was the only child asked to not use a microphone. Um, so wow. I felt I had some sort of, I must be doing something right. Yeah. Um, and then I did- a gardener, that would be like a real boost to the ego, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, like, hey, you're loud. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, That's I did. Most of us got into acting, I think. So. Right. And I really didn't do any performing until, you know, like my senior year of high school. Um, I had a crush on a girl, and she was like, I think I'm going to audition for the play. And I was like, oh, oh, me too. That's so weird. We're both auditioning for the play. Um, I was really into movies, but I had really no interest in acting. Uh, but then I auditioned, and I had a great time. I met a ton of people. Ended up going to community college here, uh, Harrisburg area. Well, it's now called Hack, uh, Harrisburg area community college. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I thought I wanted to study film. So I was like, well, I'll just start out with taking some acting classes and I will like learn how that works. Uh, but then I really fell in love with that and realized that was the creative thing I was gonna do, I guess. And I worked at uh, Gamut Theater uh, when I was, I think 20 for a season for their full-time uh, core company. Oh, I didn't know that, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I met some of my best friends and uh, they, so many of us after working at that gig have decided to stick around in this area, which is incredible. So just a, a little bit about my um, experience, I guess. I mean, one of the things I mentioned, I'm, I'm fortunate to have opportunities, um, partly is because I am a, or have been, I, I'm not so young anymore, but I was for a long time a young white man. Um, and it just so happens most plays are written for me. What? So, <laughs> when did this happen? Uh, 3,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, I'm very fortunate in that regard. And like, I don't take that for granted. Like there are so many talented uh, people who don't fit my demographic and don't get nearly the opportunities that I do. Um, so that said, um, one of my favorite opportunities early on was I got to be in a production of King Lear uh, at Gamut Theater. They do the free Shakespeare in the park every year. And I was full time uh, with the company at the time. And when I was in high school, uh, my senior year, I, like I said, I wasn't into theater and I particularly hated Shakespeare. Um, and in retrospect, it was because I had, I think, some teachers who weren't quite so gifted at conveying why it's cool. Like, why Shakespeare's cool isn't immediately apparent, I think, uh, to, some, to some folks. Uh, it wasn't to me. <laughs> I had the opportunity to play Edgar, who was the character who sort of opened my eyes to, uh, to Shakespeare as, as a writer and as a playwright. And I got to play it um, in a cast which was really tremendous, but in particular Sherman Hawkins, who was a noted Shakespearean scholar, like world renowned. Uh, he, I believe, worked at Harvard and Oxford um, and just a brilliant soul and like just a light everywhere he went, so kind and giving. That 
man constantly checked in with me to see what I thought about the character and what I thought about the play. And he never really considered himself an actor, uh, but he was so phenomenal. And getting to do my favorite play with such a giving and generous and, and talented guy who knew so much and was so eager to learn was really, really um, incredible experience for me. I have felt, and Gamut Theater is home of the classic story, um, so we, we come back to these stories and um, the big question is, well, why? Why do we keep coming back? Um, and what I found writing Cinderella was going back to the original, well, the original story, because there's so many, it's been around for so long, there's no way to find which one is the original. Mm -hmm. So I tried my best to re-examine the story and make it a story about families that don't, quite work right and maybe they could if people tried a little bit harder or they were a little bit more open-minded and so that Cinderella's journey is really not just about escaping her stepsisters but she helps them to be better people I think and she understands and she does that because she learns to understand them rather than an, a really antagonistic relationship between the two of them or the three of them. I really love that because, um, you know, most fairy tales, um, most of those classic tales have some sort of like, they're morality tales, right? And so like yeah. the bad guy, or even like sometimes our, you know, the hero, the heroine, the, the protagonist ends up having something terrible happen to them. Like I, there's a version of Cinderella and maybe in your research, you saw this, like the part where they like, uh, you know, they have parts of their foot cut off and yes, like, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the, the Grimm brothers who, who, collected stories, I think, 100 or 200 years later. Yeah, their, their versions are a little uh, bloodier. A little darker, yeah. Well, I'm glad you probably didn't include that, right? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> there, I've snuck some things into children's stories that like are maybe a little gruesome, but like haven't gone to self-mutilation quite yet. That's bad. I think a little gruesome probably works for most fairy tales. Uh. Yeah, because, you know, like, I, I remember talking to Clark Nicholson about this, um, and his fairy tales is kind of like how we learn that things are going to be bad sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, kids need, do need exposure to stories where think, bad things happen to good people, and then they see how the good people deal with that. Okay, what are your Desert Island plays? You can choose up to five. Okay. Um... I think I mentioned King Lear earlier, and it's a real downer. <laughs> it has going against it. I'm trying not to pick downers because I'm going to be stuck on an island. I want something uplifting, right? Yeah. Um, but it's it's really powerful, and it's I think all of the characters are really interesting. Even like some of the you know smaller uh, roles like are have a lot of really interesting stuff to do, and it is about a family falling apart, um, and I think that's really interesting. Um, I think. If I had to pick my all-time favorite play, Cyrano de Bergerac, um, yeah. which is a super, uh, somewhat tragic, but a, a incredibly romantic, a capital R romantic um, play about a, a guy who's amazing at everything, except he doesn't think he's handsome enough to be loved. And um, I think it's, it's brilliant and sad and, and amazing and poetic. The importance of being earnest. Would, would be on there for sure. I think that might be an example of a perfect play, um, especially like as a writer, like I look at um, Oscar Wilde's, the lines he wrote, like every single one of them is a punchline. Like they're <laughs> all so good. Like I, every character is great and hilarious in their own way. Um, and it's, it can, I feel like you could give that script to the worst actors in the world and you would still enjoy it. Um, I think it's, I think that's probably the best comedy ever written. One of the things that was really heartening when we started doing the online, uh, uh, getting to get togethers for line throughs was, uh, seeing how much everyone else was invested in continuing that process. Um, because I have, like, I'm, I'm really, when I'm in a show, it, it matters a lot. Um, and not just, and this one in particular, because like I, I mentioned earlier, I've had a lot of opportunities in, in this area. And so now I have the opportunity to play uh, a 
gay Jewish man in one of the greatest plays written in America ever. Um, so I, I've, I've kept in my head how fortunate I am to have that opportunity and to, to appreciate that because it is representation is really important. And there are gonna be people who see this play who might be gay or Jewish and need Lewis's story to be told, even though he's got a lot of problems. Um, ultimately, his heart is in a, ends up in a really good place. And um, just trying to do justice by that is important as we, as we continue through whatever this process is gonna be like. Um, and yeah, then the passion that everyone else is, is bringing with it um, is heartening because I'm not the only one who's thinking about it a lot. Like we are all, for a lot of actors, because it is a job, they show up and then they go home and there's homework, you know, there's studying, there's going to the gym, there's dance classes, there's voice lessons, but ultimately it is a job. And for us right now in this play, it's not just a job. It is something that we all care about a whole, whole lot for a lot of reasons like that. And that's really great. That's one of the reasons I love going to a rehearsal every day. Well, I really want to thank you for, um, for sharing uh, this time with me. Um, have a wonderful uh, day and rest of your weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye. See you soon, Rachel. Bye. Bye. I would turn King Lear into a musical. Be like, I'd, Edgar I'd, just having like a tap dance routine. I mean. I'd take some dance classes to do that again. That would be, <laughs> that would be awesome.